to the cloud. And I will share I my don't see everybody, but I'm hearing other systems. Does that matter? I'm just, am I doing? Uh, you should be able to see. Um, now I'm, I'm seeing, I see you, Nate, now, and the, and the Amherst, Massachusetts post that you just put up. Sure. Uh, I, I think it might so is that what everyone else is seeing? Yeah, yeah, but I'm seeing um, Greta, I'm seeing you, Karen, and Peggy. If you manage, you can, you can um, change your view to grid or, or um, you know, to be able to see all everyone at once. Well, I don't know how to do that, and I'm afraid to, afraid to touch anything because I, I oh, Murray's, Murray's, how do I change it to grid? Well, you know what? I, it's all right. I can. I well, Murray, more. Yeah. I sure. Just for everyone that's here, so you know, we the town we host these as um, webinars, not meetings. So, the yes. local historic district commission is our panelists, mm -hmm. and they can see each other and speak freely. And then everyone else is an attendee. And as the project is being reviewed, uh -huh. uh, I'm Nate Malloy staff to the commission. I'll promote you to a panelist, and then you can share your screen or, um, you know, talk with, okay. the, with the commission. Okay. And it's also being broadcast uh, or saved to the Zoom cloud, and then the town posts it on its YouTube channel in the future, so that it's available uh, online as well. Okay. So if you know, if someone has a question, you can click raise, you can cover over your name and click raise your hand. And as we go down the list of projects, we'll just ask that you raise your hand so we can um, promote you to a panelist. Okay. No, I Thank you, Nate. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, um, my name is Jennifer Taub. I uh, uh, chair the commission. I'm going to officially uh, call the meeting or webinar uh, to order. Um, and I guess by convenience, I will, um, the commissioners for, I uh, want to introduce ourselves to the applicants. Um, we have Bruce Coldham um, is in attendance, um, a commissioner, and he is the architect representative to the commission. Uh, we have Peggy Schwartz, uh, Karen Winter, uh, and Greta Wilcox. And in addition to myself, we are all uh, resident members of the Local Historic District Commission. So what we will do today is we will go in order the, of the agenda and call each uh, applicant to introduce themselves and provide an overview of their application. And then um, it will be open to uh, the public portion of the meeting for each applicant. Um, I don't think we have any abutters or members of the public here, but if we do, that would be a chance for them um, to ask questions, um, as well as uh, an op the commissioners will also ask questions um, if, if we have any questions, and then we will uh, move, we will close the meeting and discuss the application amongst ourselves while you're, the applicant is present. Uh, we may have some additional questions during that portion of the meeting, and uh, then we will um, act on the application, and we'll do that for each one. So I guess, uh, Nate, we can, um, we're going to begin with, is it 30 Fearing Street? 30 Fearing, yes. Martha, I'm going to promote you to panelist. All right, so the owner is present and I can share the, I'll share my screen throughout the hearing. So both the uh, commission and the, um, <laughs> the public can see. Okay, that's great. Thank you. Okay, so I'm Martha Jamison. I'm here with my husband, David Andrews, and our contractor, Stephen Pistrich. We will be happy to answer any questions you have about this project. You're looking at the back of our home at 30 Fearing Street, and you'll notice that there is this sort of odd one-story plus little extra wall thing hanging off the back, which is the current somewhat decrepit one-car garage. We'd like to remove that from the building. And in place of it, uh, that back wall will just continue straight down from the second story. Uh, we plan to cover it with a stucco-like paneling. I did send a picture of that. Uh, hopefully, you'll see that it, it is remarkably similar in texture, and it gets painted, so you can match the color. 
and uh, that back wall will be provided. It will be the back of the kitchen, so there will be windows pretty much all the way across and a door uh, out into the backyard, but the remainder will be this stucco. And the idea is really to bring the backyard into the house because for those of you who have ever wandered by, there is a spectacular tulip tree in our backyard and we want yeah. to see it. So just quickly, so I don't want to interrupt too much, Martha. I just want to say that yep, here's, a map, here's a map of the house. Uh, here's Fairing Street. And so what we're looking at is removal of this garage in the back. And then, as Martha was explaining, windows uh, and a door on the back of the house, but it's not visible from the street. So really what's visible for the commission's review is, you know, the garage you can see at a, you know, if you're at a slight angle, you can see the back corner of the garage here. But the work to the house um, is really not visible it's just the um, just the removal of the garage is what's what's under the commission's review. Right. Okay. Just to to clarify that, just so we're not. You know, I don't think any I don't think any other work is visible from the street. You know, just so you see. I mean, they're replacing it with double hung windows in the back. Um, the windows are six over sixes, similar to all the other windows in the uh, ground floor of the house. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. I'll go back uh, to the images. I think they're easier to, to see. So you're not adding any square footage? Yes. No, we're not. Okay. Okay. Um, do, yeah, Bruce, you have a question? I have a couple. Okay. Um, this may be a procedural one first. Uh, I notice that this application, as well as at least one other, is asking for a certificate of non-applicability and as I read or understand the uh, our rules and regulations, that would be uh, a determination made by the building uh, inspector. So does this mean that they're not actually asking for a certificate of non-applicability, that the building uh, inspector has not granted the certificate of non-applicability and we are now asking, being asked for a certificate of appropriateness? Is that what we're being asked to do here? No, right. I mean, I think sometimes um, an applicant will, will check off non-applicability when really it's a certificate of appropriateness. So what the applicant is really asking for, and it can be the commission's de determination that it's a certificate of appropriateness to remove the garage. Okay. And just so that we can put this to bed for all the other applications that we've got today, that's true of all applications that are here before us today. Correct. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Um, the... Uh, so I, that's my question, I guess. It was a little hard for me, and therefore I would have thought very hard for the rest of you to understand how this uh, diagrammatic plan was being, uh, that was, was presented to us. There are two. There's a framing plan of elevations, which I think has no bearing on us at all. Um, and, and the other plan, uh, hand-drawn, hard to tell, what the orientation was, there's no site plan, and uh, there's mention of a double garage, but I guess we're not being asked to judge or determine as far as the double garage is concerned. That's a, a statement of future intent. So I guess uh, the, the two questions are, can the rest of you understand what the meaning of this hand-sketched plan is? Um, yeah, I can and, pull and that. What, and what relevance does it have for us here? So I think, you know, some of it was to when right when it was first proposed. Sorry, let me just share the new share. It should be right. This these building sketches you're talking about, Bruce. Yes, it's it's a it's a close up detailed plan of sinks and also I don't know which way is up. I don't know uh, what the relationship of that to the site or to the existing building or to the existing garage. It, there's no connective uh, way of understanding what this means. Right. So this. This, my understanding is this, if you can see my mouse, you know, looking up to the top of the page is looking to the rear of the property. Okay. So this wall right here is that where the garage is abutting the house now. Yeah. Connected to the house. So, so that's the back of the property. We don't see that and therefore it's not our purview. Is that correct? That's, that's right. That's, yeah. I, because of the depth of the property and there's no streets around it close enough, uh -huh. the only thing that's really visible is, you know, the What's driveway. Here? Is there just the garage now? So all this work here with new windows and doors is not visible. Yeah. yeah. So, but the what is uh, to the the left there, um, there that is new. Because no. 
No, it is not. Okay. That is the existing structure. But there's a garage door there. No. Uh, if, Let if, me just make sure I've got it right. I don't know, Nate, do you have all the pictures that has the picture of the garage doors? This, the garage door faces east, correct? correct. That is correct, thank you. Yes, yeah, that's what I've got. Uh, it shows me an east facing garage door. Right. And, and I'm done, I assume that that's not staying. Correct, that is part of what we're asking to remove. Okay, so the, 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 the drawing that we would most usefully uh, apply to us would be an elevation of the new version of that elevate uh, a new version of that elevation and I I don't see that or if there is a, 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 Nate can you show us what that looks like I think the what's happening is if I go back to if everyone can see this picture the rear garage right here will be removed and nothing right. is going back in its place so it'll just be open and then on the rear of the house so underneath ah. the door and windows will be will be the new windows and door to the outside from the kitchen. And so. Oh, I see. Completely it's removed. A demolition yes. and not a rebuild. Right, yes. right. not a rebuild. And, right. and it's the, and, and the confusion for me was that, uh, that plan. I, you right. see, I didn't understand. If we had seen the whole house in that plan, it would right. have been easier. And I wanted to make sure everybody understood what was being shown here. Seems now okay. that good. I do, and maybe others do as well. Okay. All right, Martha, it's only the removal of the garage. In the new garage, it will be a later application if it comes forward. That is correct. We have not decided on a plan for a new garage at this time. So we, we are not applying for any, any garages right now. Okay. Good. Okay, I have no further questions. Thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are there any other questions? No, not for me. I don't either. I, I, I don't want to be labor, but Bruce, I'm just curious, that little part of the wall in the back of the garage that goes up, was that for design or was that for some other purpose when they built the house, do you think? It's peculiar, isn't it? Maybe they wanted to hit the tennis ball against it and then <laughs> they put a window in it and that put paid to that. That's, I mean, that's about the best I can imagine. Yeah, no other. Okay. Yeah, but it's, um, uh, okay, so if, um, and there's no members of the abutters present, Nate? We can ask if there's anyone attending who would like yeah. to raise their hand to speak. I will say that the historical commission also reviewed this for demolition delay and you know they found that the house and the garage are one structure and found it significant but that is the demolition would not be detrimental so they allowed the demolition so you know it's, there's two parallel permitting tracks that this project's going through um, and there wasn't much we could find out about the garage you know it's maybe mm -hmm. built at the same time as the house or it could have been a little bit later of an addition um, but you know to match the style yeah yeah I will, will say Jennifer, more on your question. It really is peculiar. Uh, I, I, I had a jo jocular answer, but it is peculiar in my view. And 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 you know, it 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 it's it's awkward because uh, you've got a parapet that goes up, and when you have parapets or walls that go up through or past roofs, you've got all sorts of flashing problems. I would have thought it was a really strange thing to do. Um, so it's a good question. <laughs> Yeah. I think part of the reason it's in such a disrepair is that they did have exactly those problems. Yes, I mm -hmm. absolutely. Well, it may not be my place to say that, but I think it'll be really lovely <laughs> when oh, you are in the kitchen like that. I, agree. I think yes, uh, a, a very very good idea, and and uh, and uh, if we're ready, I could move to close the public portion of the hearing. Uh, I think if there's no, Nate, there's no other questions from the butters, right? No, I don't see any hands okay. raised. So go ahead, Bruce. I just did. Okay. Uh, second? I second. I'll All second. Aye. Okay. Aye. Um, so now we will uh, move into the uh, non-public part of the meeting. Um, if we don't have any concerns, I guess we could move to approve the application. I agree. Yeah. I, I agree. Is... Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. I've got two computers open here and I'm trying to oh. have, uh, so I, I guess what I've done in the past is uh, make the motions and I've usually worked off a... Uh, of the bylaw. Uh, uh, yes, let's... Uh, and I will say that for this 
motion, once there is, there's a second, and when it comes to a vote, we'll have to do a roll call vote just because we're on Zoom. So everyone will just, oh, have, okay. to, you just have to call out members and I can yeah. record it. Okay. Does um, someone have to call the vote? Well, I'm just looking for the, uh, here we go. Um, I, I uh, move uh, 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 granting uh, of a certificate of appropriateness for the property at 30 Fairing Street for the removal of the garage, um, uh, finding that the proposed, uh, the proposed uh, demolition uh, meets the review criteria found in 8.1 and 8.2 of the Amherst Local Historic uh, district bylaw and that uh, um, the work will be in harmony with the existing surrounding properties and will not have a negative impact on the uh, local historic district. A second. A second. Karen, thank you. Karen seconds. So if, um, so instead of saying all in favor, uh, I'll go through the members for each of you to vote. So, um, uh, Peggy Schwartz, or do they, do people have to say their own name? No, you can call their name. Okay. Uh, Peggy Schwartz, how do you vote? Uh, yes, I vote in favor of the, uh, the alteration. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Karen Winter? I vote in favor. Uh, Greta Wilcox? I vote in favor. And Bruce Coldham? In favor. And Jennifer Taub, I'm in favor, too. So it passes unanimously and um, the commission issues the certificate of appropriateness to the property owner at 30 Fearing. Yeah. Great, well, thanks Martha and everyone. I'll, um, do you have any, question, any other questions or? I guess not. Might have lost them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they got the certificate. They have Quick out of here. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> all right. And then I'll, uh, so I think we're, that one's all set. I'm going to, um, what's the next one we have? Uh, yeah, Nate, you have, a, you, have a raised, you have a raised hand, just letting you know. Oh, all right. Thanks. Sorry. I'm pulling up documents. I'm mistaken. Nate, are you, uh, do you know that I'm here too, or? Apparently, I can't seem to connect with you. No, is it Jim? Let me promote you to panelist. I've I've been here right along, but I haven't been able to. Uh... Oh. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, Jim. Mm. <laughs> Dilemma. Okay, you just. <laughs> Technical difficulty. Hmm. Oh, okay, I see Ben. Yeah, okay. so I don't see. All right, hey, Jim. I we had um I I hadn't seen you raise your hand before. I did. I did that several times. I've gone oh, in did? and out of the program, but um, I, I I won't delay it anymore. Just just know that I've been here anyway. Sure. I've been able to listen. I haven't been able to speak. Well, we can hear you speaking now. Yeah, yeah unfortunately, it has my wife's name up there because she uses this program too. Oh, that's Margaret. Okay. So, um, well, you're here, so you should be voting. You know, you should. Well, I'm here. Yeah, I can vote. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I Everything. Vote. Vote. I went and saw the garage, and it's. I think uh, you haven't pushed the uh, start video button, Jim. Stop video? Start. Start video down in the bottom right hand corner is my you guess. You might have a red line through it. because I see this big M and it's, that it was, uh, there you go. Okay, the choices are Microsoft Life Cam Pro. No, no, you're on now, we're seeing you. Oh, you were, okay, all right, good. Okay, so Nate, do we now add that Jim's part of the meeting? Sure, we can have him pull in for the next, uh, for 117 Amity. Okay, oh, I'm sorry, Jim. So yeah, we yeah my apology, I didn't see that you had hit your hand raised before. Sounds great, okay. Okay, good. Elon, I'm going to promote you to panelists and let me know if there's anyone else. Well, should we only be seeing one person in the corner? Is that correct? 
Well, you can you can set it to a, a grid view, so you might be might be seeing more. I can see everyone. I can see five. You can see everyone. I'm not. I'm not sure what what I would press to get more people to be able to see more. There's an arrow. There's pressing. an arrow down the arrow. bottom. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, it looks like a paragraph. I'm afraid if I touch it, I might lose everybody okay. <laughs> and never find yeah, my you, way back. So. There will be an arrow at the top or an so arrow at the bottom, up. and then just push the one you want to see. Uh, the arrow at the top will get you back to the top of the list. The arrow at the bottom will get you down to the bottom of the list. There's a, and, there's a plus uh, and a minus. I don't see an arrow. Oh, okay. Well, I'm on an Apple, so maybe that's different. Yeah, I'm ne I never know what, it, what it looks like on someone else's computer. So we have we have uh, mm -hmm. Elon from Kuhn Riddle I'm, representing the architect for 117, representing the owners for 117 Amity. Okay, I'm sorry. Else should, anyone else we should bring on board? Um, I I am not sure um, if Garrison is there. I His see the power went out, yeah. so he may not be there. I'll, I'll promote Garrison to a panelist, and then. Okay, and then I don't know if um, Don Fisher and Susan. I don't see their, I don't see their names. Um. And Zinnia, the contractor? I don't see Zinnia either. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Should I go ahead? Uh, yes. Um, this is Jennifer. Um, hi, Jennifer. Yeah, uh, we, hi. And uh, you were here and when the um, we introduced the other commissioners? Yes. Okay, good. So please um, make your presentation. Okay. You, you can yeah. just share. I think you'll be able to share your screen. You're now a panelist. If you'd like. Okay. Great. Okay. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. So I believe that you um, received this letter as part of our application. I'm just going to briefly go through it. Um, I'm here on behalf of Don Fisher and Susan Haas, the owners of 117 Amity Street. Um, the house is uh, was constructed, we believe, in 1927. Um, it's a story and a half Cape Cod uh, style cottage. The scope of work is just removing a single car garage, which I'll show you on the drawings, um, and replacing it in kind with something that's slightly larger so that they can get a car in it and so that they can raise the floor level um, to align with the second floor of, of their current um, residence. Right now it's about nine inches lower and it's unfinished space, and they'd like to turn it into a finished space. Um, raising the floor will also allow them to put in an overhead garage door um, rather than the carriage style doors that they have right now. Uh, we are proposing some new dormers on the garage um, that'll give a little bit more head height and make that space a little bit more usable. Uh, we're adding a couple of exterior lights on either side of the door. Um, the finishes will match the existing finishes. Um, and we're using similar windows to what they currently have. Uh, they actually have put in some replacement Pella windows in the past and um, we're proposing that as well. So I think the easiest way to show you what we're proposing is to go quickly through the drawings. Uh, this is the garage that we're proposing to take down. Um, and right now those are swing doors that come out, which are in pretty bad shape and difficult to use in the winter. This is a site plan. Um, you can see that this property line right here goes through the back of their house. So they're over the property line. Uh, I, mean, I mean, not the property line, the setback. The property line is the red line here. Um, and so we're proposing to take away this garage and extend it three feet, that's what that red square is. And that's for the ZBA really to understand um, what's happening there. This is the garage. This is the main house and the garage that's coming down. This is the three additional feet that we're adding to the garage. And this is the second floor level. Currently, this is the master bedroom. There are existing closets at the same level as the master bedroom, and then there's about a nine inch step down into this unfinished um, attic space above the garage. These are some elevations. So the front elevation, which faces Amity Street, although it's set 
back behind the um, other homes on Amity Street. This is the garage that we come down. Um, this is what it looks like in the back and what it looks like on the east side or side. This is a, a section through the garage currently, um, just showing the low head height. Um, we are proposing to maintain the same form, just bring the floor up. There is an existing transom window that goes into the attic space, not into the garage space, which would come, which would go away when we raise the floor. And then this is showing the new construction. So here you can see the full garage um, in this space in that, that corner that's over the setback line. And the garage um, floor plan. There's a door and a window, and then of course a, a typical size garage door. And the second floor rebuilding those two closets and having the uh, bonus room space. And then these are the elevations. So um, <clears throat> as I mentioned, we are not able to put that transom back in because of where the floor level is, but we are proposing uh, to carry across some existing horizontal trim. Um, so that element ties into the existing house. We are proposing to put shingles uh, siding on the house, similar to, I mean, on the garage, similar to the house. There was clabbered siding there previously. And you can see that we're adding two dormers on the front and the back of the garage. And then the side has a pedestrian door, that window on the garage level, and a window up in the um, new second floor space. And this is a section looking through the garage with the new dormers in place to provide a little bit more headroom. Um, and a couple extra inches in the garage actually makes it possible to get a garage door um, opener in there. It has to be side mounted, but it will, um, they'll be able to open the door automatically. These are the little lantern fixtures, which you'll see some photographs of. We are proposing to replace the door with a similar looking carriage style door. And so this is a, a blow up of that. The existing door does have um, lights in the upper half and then panels in the lower half. Um, it will not open up like carriage doors. It'll open up like a standard overhead door. We are, as I said, using Pella casement windows, similar to what they currently have in the house, as well as a Pella uh, pedestrian door. And this is the um, rendered uh, view of what that garage would look like. This is the lantern light fixture that we're proposing to use. And here are some photos of the existing These are some interior photos of the garage. You can see those doors are, are have, have lived their full life. <laughs> and, um, and then the upstairs, which is currently storage. So we'll go back to that image and answer any questions you have. OK, thank you. That, um, thank you very much. I'm sorry, somebody talking? Uh, not me. Was, yeah, it was just some interference. I don't. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so, uh, uh, does anyone have any questions? I do. Uh, I, do I can speak. Um, yes. Briefly, yes. I know that house. I used to visit um, an English professor there many years ago, and of course, it came up for sale a few years ago. And I think that a lot of the changes that are proposed here are really quite nice and it definitely will be an improvement because that garage was never anything special. Thank you. Uh, Bruce? I agree with Jim. I, I think this is a, the kind of uh, application that we like to see. It's thorough, complete, uh, everything's there. It makes it very easy for us to understand, I think, uh, uh, what's going on, uh, what's intended. 
uh, and I have no trouble supporting it. Um, any any other questions or comments? Just Peggy. Yes, Peggy. Yeah, just uh, the same. Just a very positive response to it. It, it. it it looks like it completes the house in, in a way that that uh, very aesthetic aesthetically pleasing to me uh, to see that design and uh, and the unity with the existing structure. So I think that I think that the owners will love it. <laughs> It'll make a big difference in their in their house in their home. I would agree. I think the new dormer windows yeah. look fabulous. And um, well, of course, we really appreciate that you're keeping the style of the garage door the same as you modernize it. It's a lovely house. Yeah. Um, thank you. <laughs> are there, uh, thank you. Um, are there any other comments from any or questions? No. Uh, I guess if members of the public, if you're there to raise your hand, um, I'm not seeing any raised hands, so I think. Well, be. in that event, um, Jennifer, I would uh, move to close the public portion of the meeting. Uh, second. All second. Uh, Peggy Schwartz seconds. Okay. All in favor? Yes. Okay. So we'll close the public portion of the meeting. Um, does anybody have any uh, items for discussion? Um, if not, we could move to approve the application. Just let me close some things here. And again, I just wanted to ask the question, Nate, then we're approving it as it is presented. So it's then to be assumed that it would be, it will look the way the drawing looks. Right, right. So we're approving the plan set that was presented. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, we could, you know, to Bruce's motion or whoever makes the motion, we can just you know add that it's based on the plans that were reviewed. So that's it's kind of implicit in the in it. But. Well, I, are we ready? I, I would move uh, ex, uh, move for the granting of a certificate of applicability to the uh, uh, property at 117 Amity Street for the uh, the. Um, uh, um, the demolition and addition uh, work as described in the drawings dated and Nate, you can fill in the date prepared by Kuhn Riddle Architects. Um, finding that the, uh, the proposed uh, work, uh, uh, new work meets the review criteria found in section 8.1 and 8.2 of the Amherst Local Historic District bylaw and uh, that the uh, alteration work is consistent uh, uh, with um, and in harmony with the existing surrounding properties and will not have a negative impact on the, uh, on the local historic district. Thank you. Uh, second? I'll second it. Okay, thank you, Peggy. Uh, so again, uh, we have to do a voice vote. So I'll go around. I'm seeing you all here. Um, and let's start with Greta Wilcox. I approve. Okay, thank you. Karen Winter. I approve. Uh, Jim Lumley. I approve. Thank you. Bruce Oldham. Coldham, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Either one, uh, I approve. And Peggy Schwartz. I approve. And I'm Jennifer Taub, um, and I approve. So it passes right. unanimously. And um, yeah, good luck with the work. Thank you so much. Thanks for presenting. Bye-bye. Bye, thank Bye. you. So that, yeah, that was that was nicely presented. So the next one, yeah, it really was, is um, twenty six Cosby. So let me just pull up this one. Oh, are we going to well two sixteen Lincoln? Oh, sorry, I I skipped down. Yeah, two sixteen Lincoln. Let me just open up these everything. All right, and. Is someone here for 216 Lincoln in the audience? Oh, Susan, you are. Let me promote you to panelist. Um, Jennifer, can I say something here? Yes. I just want to declare that uh, I, um, it doesn't seem to be a, uh, an issue at all, but just in case uh, um, uh, Andrew 
uh, Bellic Concision, Bellic uh, operate, uh, who operate uh, stakeholders capital, um, perform a service, investment counseling services for my wife and myself. Oh yeah, thanks Bruce. Thank you. So does Bruce has to, does Bruce need to state he can act impartially? I think, uh, yeah, he says that. I think he made the disclosure. Okay, he, so that's implied. Okay. Thank you, Bruce. Okay, so I think um, then we'll turn over to you, Nate, to oh, Susan. Sure, I think, so I th uh, uh, can members see the application form? Yes. So is yes. Susan making the presentation, Susan Bellock? Yes, Susan, you're, you're now a panelist. You can speak and... Um, hello, everyone. Thank you. Hello. For your, hello. <laughs> a little uh, background. Um, we have gone ahead uh, inadvertently. I see. Yes. Okay. You are now looking at something that exists. Um, when the um, new circumstances of the summer presented themselves, we moved rather quickly to get uh, a mini split installed on the third floor because I have three teenage boys and it's uninhabitable on our third floor in the summertime and they're home now for the summer. So it was not an issue before. And I, um, we employed um, MJ Moran and the subject of the historic district in all honesty didn't come up. He did work on um, a house at the other end of Lincoln and they are not in the historic district. So it didn't occur to him that we, it just didn't come up. And I didn't ask for a picture of what this was gonna look like. So yada, yada, here we are. Um, and we're very happy with our mini splits <laughs> when all is said and done, but you do have some tubing on the outside of our home. And that is, I, yes, and you can see it. The, um, these are, you're looking at the refrigerant piping. It's enclosed in white slim duct. And the, the heat pump is behind that, those plantings. So there's a photograph of the heat pump, but I can't even see it when I'm standing on the side of the house. I don't um, mean to interrupt, but I walk by your beautiful house about 10 times a day and I've never noticed it. Okay, well, thank you. I'm glad. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> Son. So I want to apologize. It was so long ago that the historic district and I've had other things on my mind and we would have gone through this, this process. But uh, anyway, we are very glad to have the mini split and it does make all a world of difference. So I stand he humbly here before you. So before, yeah, before the commission, uh, I hope, can you see the image of the, you know, with the, the duct? Yes. And and I'll just do a new share with, you know, just everyone's familiar, if you can see what um, the location is on the side of the house here. So the, the north side, and I'll just make this a little smaller, you know, and, and the outside unit is something similar to this. So, you know, it's the, yeah. and Susan, your, your application, actually, there's been a few of these for installation of mini splits this year. And um, it's something I was going to bring up with the commission. I was going to talk to Rob Moore, the building commissioner, if, you know, the installation of one or two units could become an excluded, um, uh, you know, with certain criteria become an excluded project because, you know, we've had a number of these that uh, there'll be a few more at a, a hearing in July where owners are now waiting to install a mini split because it has to go before the commission. And so. Mm. Yeah, I think that's ve very much worth discussing is we really don't want to be an obstacle for yeah, yeah. Um, I agree for all it, definitely. I'm not sure that I do um, these things uh, are beneficial and I think they're they're great but they do have um, substantial uh, mechanical presence uh, where the compressor condenser units are there they have to be mounted up you know 30 or more inches or 30 or so inches above the ground to be above the snow. Um, sometimes, such as in this situation, people want to put uh, uh, awnings and things over them uh, to stop the snow and ice uh, from crashing down on top of them. 
and uh, they can become quite a, a significant visual presence. And so to the extent that we are looking at uh, chimney caps for flue liners, for um, new uh, exhaust hoods, for uh, exhaust fans that come through the wall, those two examples are far less uh, visually impactful, or far less visual, uh, far smaller visual presence than uh, a heat pump. This is a very nice one, and 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 uh, even you know if, the, if those bushes are, um, uh, have their leaves on summer and winter, then there's really nothing that one anyone could object to here. But I could I can imagine how uh, a heat pump installation, particularly where you've got more than one outdoor compressor unit and so forth, and and the the way the technology is going the single port systems are, are more effective. And so that means for every indoor unit, you have an outdoor unit. So you might have two or three of these lined up along the house. So at some point, I would uh, think that we would definitely want to be involved in looking at these, not to say we wouldn't approve them, but we might say, you know, can they be pushed back a bit or can they this happen or can that happen? So I'm not sure that I agree with the idea that we as a commission should not be looking at this sort of thing. So Bruce, I agree with your concerns. I think at a future meeting, we could have this as a discussion because I, you know, what if this were right outside the front porch near the front steps, then it is a big presence. So for the commission, uh, Susan too, just for everyone, as a reminder, vegetation is exempt from review. So for instance, you know, if those are all your, your, your screenings, you could cut them all down if you wanted and then the unit's visible. So that's why it's subject to review. So, you know, you know, any landscaping or vegetation is not, reviewed so someone could cut down trees or bushes or shrubs and not need to be reviewed so then you know some a change like this could become visible so i agree that's why it's you know still part of the review but we are getting a lot of them this summer so it's just a matter of you know could we make it administrative for one unit if it's in a certain location right. but in a certain location it's exactly. a future discussion Good. down just but for the record but i i see your point yes yeah yeah, yeah. And i have a question yes peggy yeah um, just on the noise, the noise factors, that's something that we would take into, you hear the, with most, with the older ones, I don't know about the newer ones, you hear the noise more outside the house than you do inside the house of the fan, the, whatever the unit is that's, that's doing the cooling. And that, so is that something the commission should be considering or are we considering just a visual or uh, impact of, As of these? No. Individually installed units. As as I know, there's no noise. Um, oh, okay. I, my neighbor on the other side has not said anything. I've never heard any. I've not listened for it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, on inside, you don't hear anything. These are the most wonderful things in the in the world, and they're energy efficient and stuff. So, it's it's not been an issue. Um, so. I mean, maybe my neighbor can't hear anything because he has his air conditioning on and <laughs> out. I, I, I had a big one installed in my house. I had like a three and a half ton uh, one installed last year for multiple rooms. And it doesn't, um, even when it's, you know, the fans on full speed, it's a pretty low hum outside. You know, otherwise, most of the time you, you don't even know it's on. It's oh, just it's not really quite quiet. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Okay, thank you. It's a, that's great information for me. <clears throat> Okay. Um, if I can just comment. Um, yes. I, I I tend to agree with Bruce. I think that we do have to kind of talk about this a little bit, and I think uh, Jennifer and Nate have brought up that we we will talk about this in a future meeting. Sometimes these um, are in, uh, are not well located on a particular house, uh, and they can be a little unsightly. Um, I. I disagree that they're totally quiet. I think they, it depends, you know, what maybe side of the house that they're facing on. Certainly what Susan and Andrew have done uh, very tastefully and it, it certainly should be approved in this particular situation. Hmm. Noise depends on the load as well. When it's very cold or when they're working hard, they're a little noisier than when they're Mm -hmm. not working hard so that varies but it's generally around 45 46 48 decibels which is um, you only hear it if there's very little background noise mm -hmm. or other other background noise they will very quickly be masked by traffic for example 
Mm -hmm. I've not heard it heat and that let it be said. If we've not used it for heat, we probably won't, but mm. um, anyway. Yeah, you're, you're right. The cooling load is lower than the heating load typically. Oh, really? I didn't know. Okay, that's interesting. I would have thought the other way around. No, they're made for cooling, so that's where they're efficient. And then heating, they... Yeah, and, and our, our, our heating loads are, are greater. If, if, right. if, it, if we're in Florida, it would be possibly the other way around. Yeah. Okay, um, thank you, Susan. Are there um, any abutters that... Nate? Do you want to raise their hand? I don't, we can wait a second. I don't see anyone raising hands. Okay, yep. thank you. So can we have a motion to close the public port? So moved. Okay, all in favor? All in favor. All in favor. Aye. Okay, thank you. So are there any more items for discussion or questions? Shall I do my motion? Sure, go. Okay, move uh, grant a certificate of appropriateness for the uh, um, the uh, uh, mechanical engineering uh, heat pump work at the property at uh, 216 Lincoln Avenue. Um, um, work which has been largely completed, but which we find, just a minute, <laughs> I've got to get my cheat sheet here. Uh, um, find uh, to be uh, consistent with the review criteria found in section 8.1 and 8.2 of the Amos Local Historical Bylaw and that the, uh, the, uh, the work is completed uh, is in harmony with the existing, uh, substantially in harmony with the existing surrounding uh, properties and will not have a negative impact on the local historic district. Thank you. Uh, second the motion? Yeah. I'll, I'll second. Okay, Jim and Peggy. Uh, um, all in favor? Oh, we have to do the voice vote. Okay. Um, so I'll start at the top of my screen. Um, Peggy Schwartz? I approve. Thank you. Um, Jim Lumley? I approve. Bruce Coldham? Bruce? I, I, I approve. Sorry. Oh, okay. Thank you. I didn't hear that. Uh, Greta, Greta Wilcox? I approve. Thank you. Karen Winter? I approve. And I'm Jennifer Taub, and I approve. Okay. Enjoy your cool air. <laughs> <laughs> Children at home. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Okay. All right. Now I will move on to the next one. Is that Cosby? That's Cosby, yes. All right. Oh, that's the chimney, isn't it? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. And where are we? So I know, let's see. Roger, I'm promoting you to panelist. <laughs> and I'll share my screen again for I'll minimize this. On mute. So can you hear us? Yes. Yes. And do you see us or not? Yes. Yeah, we do. Okay. So, and you heard all of us, uh, you were here for our introductions? We yes. Yep. Okay, good. So um, then we welcome you to make your presentation. Thanks. Um, so I'm Roger Matledge. This is my wife, Pat Brinkman. Um, oh, welcome to the neighborhood. Thanks. <laughs> um, so we had, um, when we were, Purchasing the house, just quick background, um, and as new people, we are totally um, new to this process, so um, excuse us if we haven't done things right, or um, let us know and we'll see what we can do. Um, the, um, and I see that I'm not in control of my screen, so I don't know. So, uh, go ahead. I was just, I'm sorry, this is Nate. I was just going to pull up just this so everyone sees the property and everything. Okay, that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, when, when we were in the process of purchasing the house, um, we, we said that we wanted the chimney cleaned. The, the previous owners went to get the chimney cleaned and the chimney cleaner said, I won't clean this chimney because it's, 
it's got problems and it needs a new liner. Um, so they were going to put the liner in, but they didn't get to do it. So when we moved in, we went to do it and then found out that we needed to have um, a permit. So we talked to, I can't remember the person at the office, but um, Nate was involved. Um, they put the, the chimney liner in, but they didn't put the, it's sitting there, um, I think it's three or six inches above the chimney with two bricks on it because yep um, i see it <laughs> <laughs> they wouldn't they um and we had they had to buy the the liner is not um warranted without a cap on it and he was going to put the cap on i said no the commission says we can't have any cap so it's just oh, sitting in two bricks right now um but it does have the chimney does have two flues um and so he said, we really should have a multi cap, multi flu cap. So, in addition to the single flu cap that we had to purchase, we also purchased the double flu cap, which you see here. Um, the location you can, can you see my cursor moving or not? I can, uh, it's right here, right? It's here's yeah. the house. The yeah, so it's on the house um, on the end of the gable end of the east side of the house. Um, the view of the chimney above is the view from the street. Um, and it's going to have this double flu kind of cap. You can see the dimensions of it there. Um, the, it's, um, uh, I can't remember the name of the, um, can you go up a little bit or down a little bit? It's the, the who's the? Superior? Superior chimney? Sweet. Superior, yeah. Yeah. So they've done these caps all over Amherst at Amherst. Yeah, yeah. F further down, uh, Nate, to, to the bottom, there's a, a half a dozen examples of what it looks like or what yeah. these things oh, yeah, look yeah. like. And, and we went around and took examples of other chimney caps around. You yeah, know, that was that was really helpful. Very helpful. Yes. Thank yeah. you for that. Okay. Um, so we can put it up as is. It's stainless steel, or he said he can also. Um, he can, um, can you scroll down a little bit more up? Um, we can also have it. Um, powder, black powder coat. Black option. powder, black powder coat, coat, coat yeah. Do so we make? Now, are these still allowed? Like the round ones? I don't know if you can see my cursor. They are. They are, okay. Like the, you know, that would be maybe like a single flu, depending on your boiler. Yeah, they're not as nice up. looking, I'm both just so they can. No, no. I have a question, if I may. Um, the powder coating, um, it seemed like a black uh, uh, cap would be slightly more appealing, ever so slightly more appealing than, uh, than, than the bronze one. Uh -huh. um, but we might imagine that it would, be get, it would get black with time, or at least after the first fire. But uh, do you know what the cost of having the powder coating done? I mean, is it, are we talking 20 bucks additional or are we talking 200 bucks additional? He's, he's gonna do it for nothing. Um, oh, and, well, and that, not, that's easy then. <laughs> it's not gonna be bronze. This, I, I just, I just um, kind of picked that image out of the, the thing. It's actually gonna be a stainless steel. Oh, okay. So if you look at the trifold, um, if you, I can't remember, I don't know where you are, but if I have images of the trifold, yep. um, and it's not that bronze one, it's gonna be the stainless steel one in the middle oh, yeah. of the second page. Yep. Can you oh, see that? Just that? Yes, that one. Yeah. So your um, choice of either stainless steel or, or, or powder black. I would probably uh, personally um, choose a, a black one, it, it wouldn't catch the sun and glint and draw attention to itself on other occasions, but, uh, but uh, the two choices is ever so fine line of uh, benefit to me, but to the extent that there is a benefit, fine though it may be, personally, I would prefer black. Hey, Any I, other questions of us? Yeah, you know, I need to say something. I'm sorry, I've been really remiss. I, re I, I received an abutters notice so long ago, I had actually forgotten, but I, by full disclosure, I'm in a, um, in a butter, I, and I will come and introduce myself. I haven't met you. I, I'm in the White House at Lincoln and Cosby. Oh, so I'll okay. say that I can still, I can act impartially, but I needed to say that. I'm sorry for not saying it sooner. Great to meet you. Yeah, great to meet you. I'll come outside after the meeting. <laughs> I'll knock on your door. 
<laughs> yeah, the, the storm's over then, huh? Did you? Was there rain down there this afternoon? Yeah, it's sunny that? now. Yeah, yeah sun, 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 sun yeah. now. Okay. Yeah. Um, are there any other questions? No. Okay. So, um, is there a motion? Uh, thank you for the presentation to uh, close the public portion of the meeting. So moved. Okay. All in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Okay. Oh, seconds and all. <laughs> <laughs> You're getting a little loose with the uh, parliamentary procedures. <laughs> um, so, uh, are there any questions? I have. I don't. No. Okay. So, should we move to vote to? Uh, well, I'll, I'll move uh, because the, the, the motion will, can be discussed. Uh, move to grant certificate of uh, appropriateness to the proposed uh, chimney cap uh, uh, to the existing chimney at property of 26 Cosby uh, with the condition that it be uh, uh, powder coated black uh, in color. Um, and then I'll go on to say that. Uh, that we find the proposal uh, meets the review uh, criteria found in section 8.1 and 8.2 of the Amherst Local Historic Bylaw, and that uh, uh, all will be in harmony with the existing surrounding properties and will have no negative uh, negative impact upon the uh, on the historic district. So um, I, I would uh, entertain a friendly emotion, a friend, a friendly emotion, how about a friendly motion, or, or, or what do you call it? Um, second. Uh, no, the the uh, well, I guess we could we should second it, shouldn't we? Yeah. Before, yeah. Uh, anyone who would like to second that motion? I'll second. Okay, thank you, Peggy. Um, sure. So should we move to a vote or was there something you want to add? Well, to? I just wanted to say I've included the condition of the black uh -huh. powder coating and uh, I re recognize that that's a personal thing, which as the mover of the motion I threw in there, uh, I will uh, willingly uh, agree to uh, excising that condition if, uh, if, if, if we agree, if we think that it's um, not appropriate. We're happy, with the powder, we're happy with the powder coat. Okay, well. I can just add that um, my experience in real estate has taught me that over the years that chimney caps are very valuable for fireplaces, furnaces, and maybe that could be considered to be one of the uh, exemptions um, that where they wouldn't have to come before our committee, but. Yes, I would add that to the list. I say that yeah. to encourage people to uh, uh, put chimney caps on because there's an awful lot of houses that still don't have them. I agree if for all sorts of reasons and, and, and anything re uh, related to uh, securing uh, chimneys um, is, is for the betterment and safety of the properties uh, because you know they this is a source of uh, property damage when chimneys aren't properly maintained and houses burn down. Clearly. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, um, I think so if there's, it, the property owner is um, comfortable with that uh, condition. And uh, can we move then to a vote? Sure. Nate, okay, so we'll move to a voice vote. I'll start at the top of my screen, which is Jim Lumley. I approve. Okay, thank you. Bruce Coldham. Approve. Uh, Greta Wilcox. I approve. Thank you. Peggy Schwartz. I approve. Thank you. And Karen Winter. I approve. And I'm Jennifer Taub, and I approve. So thank you for coming before us. And uh, um, you'll receive your certificate, you know, right away. Yeah, we can. Yeah, so that can be processed uh, pretty quickly. And you can proceed with the work. Oh, we lost you. Great. Thank you all very much. Okay. We appreciate it. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thanks. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. All right. All right. So that's. Uh, so we've completed the applications. No. Nope. Uh, well, there's. Uh, let me just see. I think 19 one, McClellan. 133, not, one, 133 fearing. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, you're Let me right. uh, pull that one up. Let's see. I'm sorry. Yeah, we do have another. 
we can I Jennifer, you can announce that 19 McClellan isn't um we can, yeah, I think we, we can put that to the end. Right. Did not complete the application, so we will continue that at the next meeting. So this is our last application today. Right. And then we'll have to determine the next hearing. And then is there anyone attending in the audience for 133 fearing? If you can raise your hand. Hmm. I don't see any, any raised hand. Oh, here's a raised hand. Oh, yes. You'll have to unmute, unmute yourself. It's, um, Can you hear me? Yes. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, let me just check. Uh, my name is Christian Cunning. I'm the uh, property owner. Uh, let, me, let, me just, let me just promote you to panelist, and then you can speak. Uh, that should work. All right. So my uh, my contractor, Mike Powell, was going to be doing the presentation. Let me just see if, uh, if he's going to be joining us today. Sure. Yeah, I thought he said at one point said he was, and I. You want to start your video, or are you, or are you happy being? Uh... Uh, my computer actually just the video does not work on my computer, unfortunately. Okay, that's fine. Can you see? I'm sharing the application screen right now. Can yeah. the commission see yes, that? Right. see that? Yes, we can see that. You see that? All right, let me scroll down. Sorry, this is um, sorry, it's been scanned. I think the easiest one is just uh, this image right here. Yes, that's the one. Yeah. And. You know, I think I'll, just for the commission, you know, there's window replacement and there are some vents happening. And, I, you know, it can be the commission's determination that the windows are um, similar to what's being proposed and then it's excluded from review. I mean, they're indicating that if you can see the screen that the, the windows here are being replaced with Harvey um, or maybe Marvin um, Slimline and they're going to match the windows. So um if we see here they're going to try to you know in, in an email they said that they would match them so that they, from the from the um street you couldn't tell that there's a difference so i think you know that's i think that's one thing to determine um you know is if that change is is can be excluded Nate, if you don't, if you don't see Mike Powell in the uh, in the in the group, then I can just give a quick uh, overview of the. Sure, front. Yeah, we'll wait. We'll wait a second. Okay. I don't know if you could hear me. I was just telling the commission they can look at the, the windows too to see if those are substantially similar and whether or not that needs a certificate. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't see Mike yet. Um, okay. All right. Um, well, I uh, we're, we're we're looking at uh, doing some re uh, renovations in the kitchen as well as the upstairs bathroom. So the three windows on the first floor. Uh, are in the kitchen space. Uh, and then the second floor window is for the bathroom. Um, so we're looking to replace those four windows, uh, you know, consistent with the renovation. Um, and, you know, not uh, to, uh, no changes on the exterior. And the, the builder, uh, who can explain it much better than I can, uh, will match it as best possible uh, to the existing. Um, just a, a Question of clarif uh, clarification. Uh, you meant you said then four windows, and uh, I think the application is talking about three, right? So was that a misstatement, or are there indeed four? Uh, so there's it looks like four. I think one might be a double window. Maybe they're kind of. Oh, well. I see what you mean. Yes, I would say that. Yes, okay, Sorry. understood. <laughs> in in addition to the windows, they're also proposing to put. Uh, you know, uh, as you can see here, a vent. So both a yeah. plumbing stack vent and then currently the bathroom vent fan uh, just empties in the attic. And so they're going to, you know, put a roof <laughs> vent for the uh, for the bathroom. So, you know. Oh, no, no. I see the current vents uh, in the photograph that I have. You can't see it on that photograph, but it's it's uh, it's on the, uh, it's, yeah, do it's I? on the, yeah, I saw that in one of the ones too. So I guess the Mike Powell, the contractor at one point said that if that vent stack may not be sufficient and they yeah. put a new one in, you know, to map, might be the same location or to match. So it'd be it's, a- It's, 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 it, the, yes, it's, it's on the other side, but my, I, I went there and took a couple of photographs today and I'm looking at a, at a vent that's coming through the roof 
in yeah, a position that is obscured by the leaves of the tree in the photograph uh, that we've just looked at. Yeah, I saw, I had a picture too. I guess maybe, it's, I don't see it with me right now. Uh, I'll mm. take pull that up, right? I don't think it's- How, how visible are those vents? Because it's very open on both sides of the house. Um, so, oh, sorry, just to give a quick background. So I uh, purchased this property uh, back in October um, from uh, Agnes Ting, who I'm sure you are all uh, familiar with. Um, and essentially the, we, we, were, we were surprised by some of the, um, the existing uh, conditions, including the vents, you know, uh, pumping into the attic. So um, I unfortunately don't have a better image for you of, of uh, what it looks like currently. Um, but, but the goal here is to essentially, you know, create a, a safer environment as well as, uh, you know, keep consistent with, with the neighborhood, so. Yeah, so I think, you know, I can, I can share the Google Street View in a minute if people would like that. <laughs> so it may be another vent or it may be uh, a replacement of the ones there, which would be going, which would be, okay. yeah, there you can see it. See, there's yeah, a vent so very clearly there. Right. So there, yeah. So it might be there, or maybe you know, it might be higher up on the roof. Let me just well, see. the the drawing shows it around the other side on the north facing gable. Well, they're saying that's where the bathroom vent fan will be. So they're going to put a, a you know plumbing stack, and then they're also going to put a bathroom vent fan. Oh, it's the it's not a it's um, okay. You know, uh, like a bathroom, uh, you know, like a roof hood, like a small yeah. little. Vent yeah, the, 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 the term vent really applies to plumbing vents and right. you would use the term exhaust if you were talking about a bathroom exhaust for air right. and you know, that sort of thing. So there's an exhaust portal through the, uh, so I, I guess it's the exhaust fan that dumps into the attic, yes. which is far less uh, terrible than, although it's pretty bad, than the plumbing vent. Um, the plumbing vent uh, dumping into the, uh, into the attic would be... Uh, uh, an appallingly uh, lax uh, plumbing uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. activity, but so the, the 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 vent is being extended mm -hmm. from the floor of the attic uh, across and through the roof on the uh, north side. Right where the, right where the cursor is, it'll be like maybe yeah. opposite of the the plumbing stack, so it might be yeah. over here. Yeah, so it's it's very confusing that it's it's that the that the uh, that the diagram that the photograph has an arrow that says vent uh, yeah. on the roof because everybody would think that was a plumbing vent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, you know, the, the windows to be replaced, you know, according to the, the application, they'll match very similarly with the same profile and, you know, have screen. So the, you know, the out exterior is not going to change at all. It'll just be, you know, insert windows to match what's, yeah. being, what's there. Huh. Uh, and what is this in this window on the third floor? What is that? The so, attic window. So that is a uh, existing vent. Uh, essentially, it, it seems as if the it would it would open um, if it reached a certain temperature. They just they the the flaps will open up to allow airflow to the attic. Uh, but that that's we are looking at replacing that as soon as possible as well down the Do road. At, so. at the front and the front gable, what you can yeah. see here. Right. That's what you're asking about, Jennifer? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Huh. I, I have no questions. Uh, perhaps others in, are there others in the audience? Well, should we, do you want to include this front, front vent as well? I mean, do you have what this would look like? Otherwise, it may have to come back again, <laughs> unfortunately. So, you know. No, we're, no, we. Uh, no, we do not have that at this time, but we're uh, we're looking at doing some from some further projects in the near future. So um, we'll definitely be back with with those updates. Yeah, I would wrap everything up into one application. So if you're going to do siding or more windows or any other work on the exterior, that could just be all wrapped up into one. Okay, it's it's cleaner. That means that there aren't a whole series of uh, small applications and decisions that uh, the, that the town would find difficult to keep track of. And I'm just curious, what is this here? I know it's not part of the application. What are you speaking to, Jennifer? See all this, uh, I can't tell what that is going from the house, from the por back porch to this black car on the lawn. Oh, I mean these, these. Yeah. So those, so, so this was, uh, this was last year previous to when I purchased the property. Um, the, uh, 
the tenants uh, that was supposedly their hockey gear. So um, they are no longer living in the property and, and um, that has been uh, rectified. Too smelly to be inside, Jennifer. Oh, oh, I thought this, this was a current picture. Got it. No, no, no this is yeah, uh, ours. Yes, there Google. was often, Jessica said I walked my dog down fearing a lot. Uh, there was often this kind of stuff on that. So I'm glad to know there's a new owner. Just not really relevant to what we're discussing, but good to know. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, are there any other questions? So then I guess we can move, uh, thank you for the presentation to the uh, public portion of the, to close the public portion of the meeting. So moved. Okay. All in favor? Second. Thank you, Karin. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Okay, bye. Um, so if there's no, is there any uh, further discussion among the commissioners or can we move to approve the application? Uh. Let me just get my computer back and okay. Um, I guess uh, I move that uh, the commission grants a certificate of appropriateness to the uh, property at uh, 133 Fearing Street for uh, work to replace three windows. Um, with identical new windows and install a uh, and extend a, a bathroom vent, bathroom exhaust vent um, through the north roof, um, finding that the uh, uh, finding that the uh, proposal meets the review criteria found in eight point one eight point two of the Amherst Local Historic Bylaw and that uh, the proposal is in harmony with the existing surrounding properties and will not have a negative impact on the local historic district. I don't think there's any conditions that I can think of that need to be replied. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there a second? Second. Uh, Jim Lemley, thank you. Okay, we will go to a voice vote again, uh, starting at the top of my screen. Jim Lemley? Yes, I approve. Um, Bruce Coldham? I approve. Thank you. Peggy Schwartz? I approve. Uh, Greta Wilcox? Yes, I approve. Thank you. And Karen Winter? I approve. Thank you. I'm Jennifer Taub. I vote to approve too. So, um, okay, with uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, Mr. Cooney, and we will uh, issue you a certificate of appropriateness for the work you applied for. Have a good night, everybody. Thank okay. you. Good Thank night. You. Thank you. Now, stop sharing the um, that, and I, oh, I guess for um, 19 McClellan, we'll have to choose a new date and just continue it until then. The property owner had submitted a building permit application to renovate the porch, and there was some back and forth, but they never submitted the information to for our review, you know, enough information. So, um, you know, they said it was gonna look substantially similar or be the same, but they never proved that with any drawings or information. So, yeah, you know, my, my recommendation is we can continue the hearing until the July, um, until July, we're gonna have to have another hearing in July for the, I, there's some pending applications. Mm -hmm. So we can continue it or we could, um, you know. I bet, I, I mean, I, I think we'd be fine to continue it. Mm -hmm. uh, that means you don't have to then post another ad. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, we definitely don't want the town to have to do that, I would think. Um, but we have to continue to a date certain, don't we, Nate? Yes, so I was gonna say we'd have to find that date. Okay. We want to do that now? Yes. It's, uh, what, it's, so it's the June 29th, I mean, if the, would it, you know, would the week of July 20th work? That's not quite the last week, but that would give us time to, I'm, a, I'm envisioning we're gonna have another one or two applications for mini splits again. Um, you know, there's another uh, one or two porches and maybe a roof. So, you know, in July, there'll probably be, a, there'll be another hearing for, for a similar renovation. Um, so I cannot do it July 20th. I don't know if we can move to a different day. I, I Oh, I was thinking the week of, even if we had to be, do the Tuesday or Wednesday, it's up to. I could do the 
Thursday or Friday. I don't know if that works for everyone, the 23rd or 24th, or I could do any day the next week. You could Thursday. say July, July 27th, does that work? And that might be, give us enough time too for legal ad purposes just to be able to get everything in. on. In. I prefer July. July 27th. Okay. Works for me. Works for me too. For me too. I think it's fine. I just feel sorry for all the the mini split people that have to wait and bear with their children in the heat. So I I huh. think we can do an earlier one too. That's fine. We're all yeah, here. We need a you know to advertise. We need a two week um, mm -hmm. window, and that takes a few days to to advertise. So just to have a hearing, we need almost three weeks to schedule it and have it publicly noticed. So I, yeah. you know, I think the twenty seventh works if we if that's good for everyone. Yep. All right, so we continue the 19 McCall on to the 27th at 4 p.m. Okay. And also online, and you'll send us a link? Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we don't, I don't, right, so good question. I don't, the town probably won't, um, at least not until September, will the town consider meetings in person. So for July and August, and maybe into September, it'll be remote. And then depending on, what's happening, we may move to in-person meetings. It'll mm -hmm. be difficult because we'd have to maintain social distancing. So even, you know, to have 10 people in a room, we'd have to have a pretty large room. So yeah. 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 Can I also add another, um, I just wanted to well, make a general, just an, to share this information. Um, I don't know if you all receive calendars of the meetings of the different committee commissions and boards, but this Wednesday, July 1st, um, Amherst Media is going before the planning board. So we don't have a formal role, but I just want to let you know if you, I'm gonna zoom in, it's at 6.30 on Wednesday. Hmm. And Nate, will you be answering questions if they, if? That's a really good question. I hadn't planned on attending. Um, let me talk to Chris Brestrup. You know, my thought was, um, the planning board, you know, we, the commission wrote a letter and then I submitted the plans that were approved um, by the commission to the planning board. And then, you know, Amherst Media has essentially used those in their application. So there wasn't, um, you know, there wasn't a lot of, you know, as far as I know, there wasn't any deviation from those plans, but I guess, and I, I guess that an, might be I, know, I know the certificate is included in their application they submitted. Mm -hmm. I mean, what would, uh, maybe this is more the purview of the zoning board of appeals, but will the planning board like, you know, weigh in on the parking? I mean, because they- They could. So the planning board, you know, the, if the planning board decides to change the site plan review, um, the site plan, and then Amherst Media, you know, needs, if they end up changing their plans, then they have to reapply to the local historic district. So I don't, you know, I think the letter and everything that's been submitted speaks for itself and it's really the planning board's decision so i mean i guess i could attend but if they want to change the parking or if they don't think the building's situated correctly or the drainage doesn't work that may require a change to the to the building and everything and then they might have to then come back to the commission so it's, you know it's, i don't I'm, i don't want you to have to add another meeting <laughs> okay. here. but if so let's say we're listening in if if there's a question Sure. If, if you're Jennifer, if you're in attendance, you could always raise your hand and as chair of the commission, you know, at, you know, just um, at someone, the chair, of the, the chair of the planning board will probably recognize you. So you could speak. Okay. Yeah. 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 Cause I mean, it, it may, they may have questions. I, you know, I hadn't anticipated that just because I've, you know, I've answered some with staff to help staff answer questions, but there, you're right. There may be some. I probably won't, but I'll just. So Jennifer, you could, Possibly uh, email Chris Brestrup and just tell her that you intend to be there so that the chair of the board will know okay, that you're there and, and uh, it'll make it a little more likely that you'd be recognized. Yeah, I'll yeah. do that. Oh, that's a, and that's Nate, can they provide a packet? Is there any packet I should have before the meeting? Uh, yeah, if you email Chris, you can ask for one. I can, I'll, let me just make a note. I can try to send you one. Um, okay. It might be online even too under the planning board, but okay. ben, do you know if, they're, if the packets are online or? Um, I'm not sure. They did, I know, yeah. Okay, I'll email Chris. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank well, you. Yeah, nice I was for, yeah. Moving along. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I received a link for the packet, but I don't know if it's, um, 
you know, we can share it with certain individuals, but I don't think it's open to the public. So maybe that, you know, we just have to include your name and then you get a link to the, you know, we have a OneDrive and then you can view everything. Mm. Okay. Just for, the, for this one meeting. Right. Yeah. Right. I made it for all of it. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so I just wanted to share that with you if any of you want to pop in for that. Thank you. Interesting. Yeah. And while we're speaking of Amherst Media, you know, they did, their attorney appealed the commission's decision a while back, you know, arguing uh, the time frame. Um, we, the commission acted outside the time frame. And so, um, you know, the town has to respond sometime in July, but I think it, that, that appeal, I'm not sure, it hasn't really gone anywhere. But you know, just to let you know that the Amherst Media appealed the local historic district commission's decision. And there may be something in the next month or two to relay to everyone. Can I just ask a question? What specifically? I'm sorry. Well, I'll let you go. For it. Just one, one. Is that stipulation that we would have had to issue something in writing saying that we were continuing the item on the, we were keeping the meeting open so we wouldn't be issuing a certificate within X number of days. Is that a statewide regulation or just our town? No, it's a statewide. And so I think the, um, you know, the local historic district, both our bylaw and the state bylaw says that within 60 days, there'll be a certificate issued, you know, whether or not it's uh, approved or denied. And, you know, it's interesting, um, continuing the hearing, uh, some will consider it that that's a, um, a notification. Yeah, it is. And others will say that the applicant should provide something in writing or sign something. So to be safe, you know, the town attorney recommends moving forward, just having a form letter with the application. And that part of the application is that the applicant agrees to possibly go beyond 60 days just so it's in writing. It's, you know. Oh. Well, yeah. Yeah, it's an odd. Have a question, Peggy. I'm sorry, I didn't want to cut you off. No, I just thought, I thought that we had kind of come to an agreement with them as to uh, where they, what was, we did, but it wasn't signed. I didn't realize that. I thought that was, I thought that I don't was, think anybody realized that. I think oh, they're, okay. continu they're continuing to agree the hearing is, um, may not be legally strong enough as, you know, instead of they should have signed something saying they agreed to, to continue it, you know, even though they were at the hearing and agreed to it. So it's huh. kind of a legal nuance, but. Hmm. Huh. Thank you for clarifying. Yeah. So we, you need a motion, Jennifer, to uh, yeah. uh, move there, the. Uh, anybody have any other items? Well, uh, the, the, yes, the item we haven't completed. Uh, a motion to uh, continue the uh, application yeah. for nineteen McClellan to uh, uh, July twenty seventh at uh, four p.m. Yeah. That was a motion. Yeah. Second. I sure. second. All in favor. We don't have to do a voice vote, do we? I uh, say we should. We should. Okay. Okay. Starting, uh, Greta. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'll go this way. Peggy. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Continue. Bruce. Yep. Jim. Yes. yes. Karen. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. All right. Great. Okay. <laughs> Now I will ask, are there any other items anyone wanted to discuss or bring up? No. Well, Jennifer, I just wanted to say that uh, if Room Rater is uh, looking in on us, uh, your uh, background gets the uh, prize, I would think, and your <laughs> yeah. the lighting and everything is very uh, clear, <laughs> right. which fortunately, oh, being looking. the chairperson, uh, it, it yeah. comes over, we look very well as a commission. <laughs> uh, so thank you just for that. And, Thank you. I was going to say that um, Greta, you, Bruce, and we have the same color in the background. Oh. <laughs> yes, and Peggy has a beautiful green. No, I've been looking at everybody's. I love pictures behind Karen and Jim. Beautiful artwork. <laughs> I have a quick question. I have a quick question. So on Lincoln, um, down by Amity, the yes. power company came in and put in a giant... I have some pictures of it, yeah. a giant um, apparatus on the telephone pole. Hmm. And maybe that's not our concern at all, but it seemed pretty aggressive for a historical district to have this giant, next time you drive down Lincoln, look up on your right, um, going towards Amity, 
and you'll see the um, new, um, looks like a flying saucer landed on top of the, um, on top of the telephone pole. And I just wondered, for one thing, I wondered if the, it, maybe it's nothing to do with us. I have a picture of it, is what I'm looking down for. But um, if the telephone company could at least take away the old wires would help. And do they need permission to put that up or whatever? Anyway, look at it and see what you think. Yeah, that, that's an excellent question. Yeah, that's that's a tricky uh, tricky to answer. The um, um, I I say yes. Some might say no. It might become a legal question. You know, they might not really be on a property, but the bylaw doesn't necessarily apply to apply just to property. It's also any you know any erection of a structure or or object. So. Um, I'll talk to Rob about that. I think that's a really difficult one. When we were forming our first local historic district, there was a case in Rhode Island where the utility company came in and they're putting all new gas meters and electric meters on the front of buildings, even in historic districts. So, you know, where, where the meters used to be on the side, there was one case that came and they put in like a dozen, half a dozen or more electric meters right on the front of the porch of a historic house in a historic district. You yeah. had a big board of six electric meters. I think it, it, went, it went to court and... Um, I think it's a difficult thing. Uh, utility well, they, companies will say that yeah. they're immune, or you know, they have some sovereign something. And mm. so, but I the don't electric the electric meters are a, an initiative of the building owner, I think. Uh, though, and in, in Rhode Island, in this case, it was the utility companies were saying they were putting in all new meters for you know, whatever smart metering or something. But I'll mm. I'll talk to Rob about this one on the telephone pole. I don't I don't know. Thanks for bringing it up. I, I don't know. Hey, the answer. Greta, do they? Oh, is there now a thicker cable that goes down the whole street? Yeah, I'm thin, yeah. I'm sure it's to give Wi-Fi to UMass or something. I'm not sure, but um, it's very large. It's very ugly, and I I've heard that it's the telephone companies don't even take the old wirings down because they're going to do everything so fast. So right. I don't know. I took some pictures. I can't find my pictures of it, but I have if taken. You could, if you could email yeah. those. Yeah, thank you for bringing that up. Yeah. Yeah, if you email the pictures, Greta, that'd be great. I'd be, I'm, I'm, I'll, look, I'll look into it. I don't know if I, yeah, I don't have an answer really right now. Yeah. Hmm. Thank you. Did they go on uh, Sunset as well, do you know, or just down I Lincoln? Know. I only saw the one on Lincoln. Um, yeah. Let's see if I find. Well, I'll mail it to you. Okay. Thank you. And then we still wanted to revisit the uh, demolition by neglect, but we can maybe do that after the summer. This one of the few, I mean, the summer's our busy season because so many people are working on their houses. Right, yeah, we had, yeah, I think, and they started late, so we're getting quite a few applications in. Right, because of the quarantine. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, do we have to move to close the meeting? I think, well, we, well yeah, or, so moved. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to fall off my chair here. Yeah, I can't do that. Is there a second to close the meeting till? Second. Yeah, Thank second. You. All in favor. Uh, uh, Thank you again, okay. Jennifer. Thank you. Jennifer, yeah, you, Jennifer, you, Jennifer, you, you did, you well, did very uh, well. Very well. I mean, up. it's a difficult thing to do. We have six applications and we got through it in five hour, in an hour and 20 minutes. And, uh, and it was very... It, we were great compared to uh, some of the <laughs> other uh, people I've seen on uh, channel, channel 17 when they were trying to figure out who was where. <laughs> yeah. So between you and Nate, I think uh, I felt that we really no, used I'll, our I'll, time well. So long. thank you all very much. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank I thought, you. I thought 117, I agree. I think we can, if we have an, if we'd like to use an example application, 117 was nicely done mm -hmm. with the plans and pictures. Yeah. 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 It was. And I, the last thing on that, um, what is it, 133 Fearing, there's usually a beer pong table permanently <laughs> on the lawn. <laughs> the are we, are you saying we should regulate that? Is that a permanent structure there, Jennifer? Are we? Yeah, I don't know. Well, so I had to laugh at that. Yeah. So all the <laughs> hockey uniform or whatever on the ground, that's right. typical of that property. Mm -hmm. Anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, okay, folks. All right, thanks, yeah, everyone. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. End the meeting.